Welcome to yet another video. So today, oh boy, this is a big one. It's a big one. I am sending an email to Rico Pentax in regards to a brand new DSLR that I have conceived with the help of AI, going back and forth, reviewing and researching a billion different types of uh, prisms, uh, looking at the design fundamentals of the current DSLR with the pentaprism at the top. And I started thinking there's got to be some kind of prism that can split the incident light, right, in different pathways. So we could have mirrorless tech. Yes, mirrorless tech with a beam that is going straight to the image sensor. So we would have on sensor phase detection, autofocus, just like a mirrorless camera. And then another beam that is split from there going up towards the optical viewfinder area. So working with AI and refining it, going over and over and over again, finally got to a design that AI agreed actually is very innovative and would work. So I am proposing this to... Rico Pentax. Check it out. All right. So at the very beginning of this, uh, I just started off explaining to Pentax how I've been a longtime Pentax user dating back to around 1984. Uh, and then I explained during this uh, transition of the digital camera age, I did stick with Pentax due to the vast lens compatibility and amazing ergonomics. Uh, then the hybrid interchangeable lens camera age took place. Uh, Sony had tried their SLT design, uh, semi-translucent mirror, yeah, uh, which didn't work that well due to the light loss going to the image sensor, uh, because they were using a mirror, uh, a fixed mirror that would allow, uh, you know, a little bit of the light to get to the sensor and then a little bit of light to go up to the optical viewfinder, but it was, they were strictly using a mirror. Right, so it didn't quite work that well. Uh, this created very poor dynamic range and poor image quality regarding noise from a poor signal to noise ratio. So I'm kind of giving a background that I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, over time, uh, you know, I've thought since mirrorless is at a point now of convincing even longtime Pentax users to move over to mirrorless, maybe it's time to look very deep at the design of the DSLR because I do still think a lot of companies, uh, well camera manufacturers haven't really really gone back and started from scratch in regards to the entirety of the insides of a digital single lens reflex camera right we're still using the same principles uh that were done on film cameras right and technology has grown leaps and bounds uh however they're still sticking with the old designs which i think could be improved drastically right uh keeping the pentax ethos in mind uh you know i started researching different prism designs and took a step back to reevaluate the interior layout of a dslr i realized that uh, there's no reason to still hold on to the pentaprism is at the top traditional design perhaps a new design is needed for a new camera that's never been done previously so this is where I began some markup drawings based on the various prisms I found while researching until I came up with a completely new idea. Now, with the assistance of AI, I refined the idea over and over until a final feasible design was realized. Uh, you know, just trying, uh, chatting back and forth with AI uh, in regards to specific designs of uh, prisms and refracting and light amounts uh you know and just different ways to be able to bounce light and split beams and anyway there was a lot of uh back and forth and for most of the initial ideas i had uh ai did bring up the point that those would not be feasible uh one was over polarization of the beam right which would be extremely difficult to correct uh as well as uh producing aberrations as the light is bounced into uh, within the interior of the camera so it was just a lot of back and forth a lot of refinement and then finally uh you know, I do mention to Pentax that I just wanted to share in case this is something that would spark some creative juices within Pentax. And just to be transparent, I do not have any patent applications for this idea, and I have no plans to do so. So if any of you guys are geniuses, have at it. 
<laughs> uh, I'm just providing the idea as a means to help the company since I believe in the products and also believe there's still more room to innovate within the DSLR product market. So below are the takeaways from the AI assistance during the refinement of the idea. Advantages of a thin film coated beam splitter, which was the final piece that would make this all work. Uh, reduced polarization effects. So these beam splitters can be designed to, in, to minimize polarization dependence, which is crucial for maintaining image quality and autofocus performance. And the versatility of using a thin coated beam splitter, they can be manufactured with various beam splitting ratios, allowing uh, one to fine tune the amount of light sent to both the viewfinder and the sensor. Manufacturability, which is very important, the thin film coatings are a well-established technology, making these beam splitters relatively easy and cost-effective to produce. Wider wavelength range. They can be designed to work across a broad range of wavelengths, which is essential to color photography. Now, how this would fit in my design idea. So I'll show you the design idea afterwards. Uh, so this all makes sense. Incoming light. So the light enters the lens, then the beam splitter, a thin film coated beam spl splitter blah, divides the light into two beams, right? So you have one, which is the sensor path, and then you have the viewfinder path. So on the sensor path, one beam is directed straight to the image sensor. And you could still use on sensor phase detect autofocus. So you could get mirrorless speed and accuracy with a gazillion autofocus points because it's all embedded directly on the sensor. Uh, and then you have the other beam that is directed to the viewfinder system. And this system could still use, uh, could still incorporate fixed mirrors and a magnifying element to enhance the viewfinder image. Specifically for the mirrors, I thought, uh, you know, using silvered mirrors, right? Just to amplify the signal, uh, you know, sorry, amplify the light. And one of those mirrors or the viewfinder itself could be a, you know, a, high magnification so it would still be a bright image still be clear uh you know and that would help with manual focus as well so the key considerations beam splitting ratios you'll need to carefully select the beam splitting ratio to balance the light sent to the sensor and the viewfinder all right which is why i was thinking silvered mirrors and a magnifying piece or magnifying element that way uh, any it would minimize any light loss and it could re-amplify the light going to the viewfinder which uh if we did it the other way where it went to the sensor that could cause problems if it's not enough light or it doesn't magnify enough right so majority of light would go straight to the sensor and then it would be re-amplified up to the viewfinder right uh anti-reflective anti-reflection coatings, which Pentax is known for their coatings, so I don't see this being an issue at all. Using anti-reflective coatings on all optical surfaces is essential to minimize light loss and ghosting, right? So I think this design really would fit Pentax very well. Uh, the optical alignment, obviously, just like any DSLR now, precise alignment of all optical components is still critical for optimal image quality. So the benefits of my design, it addresses the polarization concerns of Rotron prisms. It simplifies the object design compared to using uh, birefringent prisms. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And it allows for greater flexibility in controlling the light distribution. So in conclusion, using a thin coated beam splitter makes your camera design much more feasible. Why, thank you very much. It's a proven technology that offers the necessary flexibility and performance for a modern camera. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So at the top here, we have a traditional DSLR. Light comes in, hits the mirror. There's a secondary mirror, which is not in this diagram here, but there's a sub mirror here, which light would bounce off of and go down to the image sensor, or the uh, autofocus sensor, which would be down here, right? So light goes in, goes up, bounces around the pentaprism, and then goes out the optical viewfinder. Now on a mirrorless camera, the light goes in, just hits the sensor, and that's it. And this is electronic coupled to the sensor. So what you see here is what the sensor sees here. And my new DSLR design, so the light ray would come in, it would hit the beam splitter, which is essentially two prisms mounted together. 
Uh, so light would hit the sensor, and at the same time, it would reflect. There's no mirror. It would reflect directly up to a silvered mirror, another silvered mirror. This would be a magnified uh, optical glass, so it would amplify once it hits the optical viewfinder. And you could essentially couple like a, a, a thin film display within the optical viewfinder, uh, but I'm not going to get into that. We'll just leave it as completely optical right now. So the idea, if you compare it to here, is essentially the same. The only difference is this would be optical, so you'd need to be able to have light going up and through. But everything from here to here would still be exactly the same as a mirrorless camera. And that would give the advantages of both having the optical viewfinder DSLR experience with the speed and performance of a mirrorless camera. Am I crazy? Or is this actually feasible? I mean, hey, according to AI, which is supposed to be all knowing, <laughs> It's a very, very good idea and it would work. So split beam technology, prism at the bottom, mirrors on top. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Yo Play yogurt, but in DSLR form. Okay, that was dumb. Anyway, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts? If they were to pull this off, I think it would be absolutely sick. I think it would be wicked. Oh my god, I just realized the most, the second most important thing, not the most important, the most important would have been to apply for a patent, but I've already been down that road with other things in the automotive world, trying to patent different ideas and stuff, but a lot of time and effort went into those just to find out that someone else is already sitting on patents, even though mine were more advanced than what they did. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm past, I'm past the patent thing. I don't care. I'm giving this as a gift to give back to the community, specifically Pentax corporate to see what they think, if they'll actually do it. I doubt it, but you never know. And, uh, all right, time to hit send. And there you go. It's gone. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out.